Okay, so we're here on in Maui. It is January of 2024, and uh, we're doing one of our uh, re uh, service projects here, doing a little bit of restoration. I'm with Kim. So Kim, tell us what, what's the name of this little valley we're in, and tell us what this project you guys are working on is. Okay, so we are in Oluwala Valley, which is one of the many valleys of the West Maui Mountains that we refer to now as Mauna Kahalawai. Um, I should note Mauna Kahalawai is a relatively modern Hawaiian name for oh. the mountain. There's a lot of research. Because you guys are cutting edge, is what you're saying. <laughs> in a way, in a way. <laughs> so there's a lot of research by like Hawaiian scholars into the ancient name of the mountain. Ooh, cool. Yes, one of which is Mauna Eeka. Um, but we use Mauna Kahalawai now, which is in song and in some like recent oli that have been uh -huh. composed. Uh -huh. So Kahalawai means um, the house of water or the meeting place of water. Cool. And a deeper meaning is the place where heaven and earth come together. Ooh, yes, I love it. It's well, it's beautiful. heavenly today it and is. we were certainly in water. Yes, That's perfect. Exactly, exactly. So if you like looked at a bird's eye view of the mountain from the center radiating out is valleys and then streams within each valley. Right, so we right. are in one of them called Sweet. Oluwalu. Um, which is kind of on the leeward side of the mountain. So as we're seeing here, it's a pretty dry environment. And for you guys. For us. For you guys, yes, it's dry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but actually, so usually we've actually been in drought for quite some time. And so if you look up there at this mountain, it's... So we're talking about the hillsides, yes. the hillsides of this ravine that we're looking up at. Yes. And you can see there's like tinges of green. Yep. Um, but most of the year it's like yellow. Right. Tan. It looks like died back vegetation. Exactly. It looks like desiccated. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And used to be when I was growing up, this mountain would turn like bright green every winter time. And it hasn't done that quite as much this year. So it's been extra dry. But anyway, the landscape we're seeing here is all introduced alien species. Mm -hmm. Invasive. Introduced since about the mid 1800s. Yes from ranching days. Yep yep yep, 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 yep. And so we see buffalo grass, which was introduced for cattle. Haolekoa, which was introduced for cattle. Kiave was also introduced for cattle. And those last two are woody species. The buffalo grass is obviously the big herbaceous uh, 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 grass. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's what we call grass. Okay, yeah. <laughs> grassy grass. Right. Right, grassy, grassy grass, grass. yes. Um, yeah, and so all of these work together to, you know, breed the fire cycle which is not native to Hawaii. So California, the fire cycle is right. part of the natural right. way of things. Not here. Lava, not but no here. fire. Lava, but no fire. Occasional right. fire just because of the lava. Right. But by and large, there's no seasonal wildfire action happening. Um, and so most of our plant species are not adapted to fire. And of course, this area has been subject to fire over time. So this project that we're working on here is to restore this riparian corridor for multiple mm -hmm. reasons. So one is, you know, get all the invasive stuff out and put all the uh, native stuff back in very simply. But on another level, this in theory will create a native green belt fire break. Yep. So that fire going from one side to the other would hopefully get stopped here. So the, so the rip riparian corridor is a break for the larger scale, um, more intact fire fuels that have, that have always been here but with climate change and desiccation and changing landscapes we're seeing even larger chunks of burnable uh, uh communities. yes yes and there's actually been studies into like native vegetation and it's um somewhat more resistant to fire because the plants i think are able to hold more moisture mm -hmm. and you know in theory when you have a thriving ecosystem there's so much vegetation hugging each other Right, making right. friends that it's there's a lot of like humidity in the ground a lot of moisture. nurse plant type phenomenon going on yes, a lot which of would naturally yeah. um you know impede fire from spreading and so that's part of the goal here and then also when you have this you know invaded environment with the spongy native forest not intact there's a lot more erosion and runoff which goes right into the stream which goes right, right into the reef right. and Oluwalu to tie in the whales and everything totally is a mother reef it's like one of the biggest reefs in all of Hawaii it seeds a lot of the other reefs around here it's like a manta ray breeding ground and so it is in our best interest you know it's like a giant aquaponic system <laughs> yeah totally mountain. totally yeah, yeah. totally and so we want the water that's feeding our fish to be nice and clean so this would also help filter the water prevent runoff 
Um, I love it. And so, and so the approach you guys are doing is, is in trying to revegetate, you guys are, let's put in woody, relatively hardy woody species, recover that canopy. So when we continue to knock down the, or especially herbaceous invaders, um, we can come in with the next wave of, exactly. of um, uh, other community composition species to sort of continue flushing out the forest. Yes. So we are standing on the shoulders of now decades of restoration work in Hawaii and learning from places like New Zealand as well. But yes, we put in our foot soldier hardy a'ali'i kind of plants first. In theory, they grow out and shade out all of these grasses and then we can you know, incrementally add more Sweet. fragile plants. I love it. All right. And we did, and the green things, people, I don't know if people can see that in the video, but the, the, the green pin flags when we were launching, maybe you could see that's what uh, the students did today. Yes. Uh, but one part of a from, much larger effort. Yes. So this has been going on this particular area for a couple of years now. So when we started, this cleared area with all these nice flags and space looked like that bushy area. Looked like the area up, up, upstream from us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 And through the work of wonderful, dedicated volunteers like yourselves, we've been able to clear this. And you can see these plants are a couple years old now. Some of them are starting to, you know, flower and make seeds even. So Sweet. more babies to come. I love it. All right. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, cool. Mahalo. Yeah.